Welcome to Wildlife Acoustics and Kaleidoscope Software. Download Kaleidoscope from wildlifeacoustics.com. There is no charge, and Kaleidoscope will run on the latest Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems. Kaleidoscope is a powerful set of tools which are used for analysis of wildlife recordings. Kaleidoscope can be upgraded to Kaleidoscope Pro, which then provides the features of cluster analysis, auto ID for bats, noise level analysis, and database and cloud functions. In this video, I'm going to focus on the free download of Kaleidoscope with an emphasis on the viewer window. When I launch Kaleidoscope, the first thing I see is the control panel. I'm going to choose Set Defaults from the file menu. This video is for people working with birds, frogs, and other acoustic range signals, so I'll choose Non-Bat Analysis Mode. In this video, I'll highlight the functions specific to acoustic range recordings, and I'll ignore buttons and menus that are specific to the ultrasonic range. I'll go to the File menu and choose Open. Now I'll navigate to a standard WAV audio file. Let's take a look. When I open an audio recording file from within Kaleidoscope, that causes the viewer window to open. The viewer provides visual and audible feedback and analysis of the content of the recording. In the top part of the viewer is the oscillogram. The oscillogram displays a waveform of the audio signal and is typically most useful for observing amplitude at any given point. You can see the amplitude here correlates with the activity in the spectrogram window below. I can expand the oscillogram window to show a larger view. I can zoom in or out vertically with these buttons. This button allows me to switch between seeing the positive and negative energy of the waveform or just seeing a rectified view of one side of the waveform. The bottom part of the viewer window displays the metadata panel. If I scroll, I see the metadata that was embedded into the recording by the SongMeter 4 recorder. This includes things like time and date of recording and recorder settings, such as sample rate, high pass filter, microphone type, and so on. I'm going to explain the metadata panel further in a separate video, which will also cover the control panel window and overall batch processing of files. I don't need the metadata panel in order to use the basic functions of the viewer window, so I'm going to press this button to close the metadata panel. I now have more room to display the oscillogram and spectrogram. The viewer provides extensive zoom and scroll functions. I'll start by pressing the vertical zoom to fit button. This fills the window with the full frequency range of the audio file. I can zoom in and out vertically and scroll the view. There are plus and minus buttons to zoom in and out. I can scroll the view left or right. I can zoom to fit horizontally to display the entire length of the file. The viewer makes extensive use of keyboard shortcuts for fast operation. For example, if I want to use keyboard shortcuts to zoom, I first click on the spectrogram to make it the window of focus. Then I press Ctrl-Z and a number from the top of the keyboard. Here is the zoom preset for Ctrl-Z4. Here's the zoom preset for Ctrl-Z5. I'm going to click and drag to draw a box around this signal. I can right click and get an option to zoom to fit. I'll choose that and you can see the viewer has now zoomed to my selection. The spectrogram view shows frequency from top to bottom. There is a frequency ruler on the left. Time is displayed from left to right and there is a time ruler along the bottom. Color coding is used to represent relative amplitude of the audio signal. I can use the brightness slider to increase amplitude and the color intensity changes. There's also a contrast slider to remove background noise. There are many preferences I can adjust in the viewer, including the basic color coding of the display, and I can always go back to the default settings. This button inverts the color display, and that might be useful if you want to print the contents of the window without using up all your black ink. If I want to save the entire window as a graphic file, I can choose that option from the File menu. I can also choose to save a WAV file of a selection or the entire visible contents of the window. Another display option is to adjust the FFT size. Here's a recording of an owl. The owl makes a relatively low frequency sound, and with the current FFT settings, the low frequency resolution of the call looks a little blurry. I'll go to the File menu and choose FFT Settings. 
The default FFT size of 256 is generally useful for higher frequency songbirds and more rapid sounds. A larger FFT size will provide greater frequency resolution and this will be most apparent at lower frequencies. Generally, the FFT size should be double the window size. I'll set the FFT size to 1024 and the window overlap size to 512. Now the owl call is much more distinct. Here is the fundamental frequency, and these are the upper harmonics of the call. I'll go back to my original file and FFT settings. If I right-click in the spectrogram, I can place a horizontal guide line. I can right-click a second time to place a second guide line. If I right-click a third time, I place a new line, and the first line I placed goes away. You can see there's a crosshair where I locate my mouse, and this shows elapsed time in the file as well as frequency. The reference lines are a great way to compare frequencies of multiple signals. If I double right click, the lines go away. I'll make a selection. If I press this button, that will open a viewer analysis window. The analysis window shows me information about the amplitude of different frequencies within the selection. If no selection is made, the analysis window shows amplitude information of the entire visible area of the window. Some of the parameters in the analysis window are specific to BAT recordings and will be blank when analyzing non-BAT recordings. If I right-click on the analysis window, I can copy the graphic of the spectrogram or all the displayed statistics. I can then paste the statistics into a spreadsheet application or paste the spectrum view into a graphics program. I can play the file. In order to hear playback, I'll make sure my computer speakers are turned up if no selection is made, the play button plays what is currently visible in the window. Here's a cool trick. If I drag in the frequency ruler on the left, I can create a bandpass filter. Now when I play back, only the frequency range I've highlighted is what I hear. This is a great way to isolate a signal from upper and lower frequency sounds and noise. If I make a selection and press play, I only hear the selection. I can control playback speed. So here is the selection at one eighth of its original speed. If I click again on the frequency ruler, that will make the filter go away. There's a lot to know about the viewer window. I definitely recommend reading through the viewer section in the Kaleidoscope user guide. Be sure to check out the companion video that explores metadata, batch processing, and the control panel. And Wildlife Acoustics also has an extensive library of tutorial videos for the Kaleidoscope Pro functions. Thanks for watching.